how you can make your life easier with processing if you make your own library. How to make your library really simple. So let's start with an uh, example scenario. Imagine you are teaching somebody uh, how to use process. Yeah? And you have this really, really simple sketch. Basically, you have a bouncing ball, but you don't want them to go through all those uh, problems of declaring variables and everything with bouncing ball. You just want them to have use the one which is already available. So if they declare a bouncing ball, they are uh, declaring its... Uh, where it's going to be, the, the limits, and then they draw, they call ball update, and, uh, and they draw. And this bar, bouncing ball example, is going to look like this. So the ball is flying around, bouncing, and everything is great. And uh, people are happy, they can play around, they can, uh, they can uh, avoid the uh, raising background, and you know, like this. They can play with, uh, uh, with different colors. Uh, like this, so then the, the ball is going like this, and it's pretty cool and pretty interesting. And they can play and see it very, very visually uh, what it is. Uh, later on, you might want to do another thing. You might uh, want to use circular ball, and this is going to be a uh, ball which is a bit different. Uh, which basically what it does is just moves around in a circle. It just moves around in a circle and it's cool as well. You can uh, play around with, uh, with whether you're raising the background or no. And obviously it's, it's kind of interesting to see uh, and play around with, uh, work with graphical effects. You can actually replace uh, ellipse with a rectangle, so now it's a rectangle flying around, so this is pretty cool. And it would be, and I was also thinking, it would be nice to have a whole library of those available objects like circular ball and bouncing ball, uh, which you can easily plug into your processing sketch, and then you can just query their X and Y code, and that's it. And before that, we just uh, call the update uh, method on the object, just to be sure that you get the next code. So that's all great and nice. And usually the way it's solved is that we have we, we implement those classes in our sketches. And that's pretty good strategy, uh, but it has a bit of a problem. The problem is, first of all, if you want to use it in a new sketch, you need to copy-paste. And this is really annoying and tedious. And then eventually, after 10 sketches, you're going to have 10 versions. Second problem is that people usually have um, a tendency to try to modify things and try to break them so they may break or copy paste them correctly or create a other set of problems which you can well, actually it even distracts because it distracts from the structure of the sketch here we don't want to think about that there is another bunch of code here we just want to be sure that there is something really as simple as this and make people happy without making them get scared looking at all the code which is not that scary still so, the one of the options is actually to use the library. Here I already have the library installed, so just to update things, I'm going to comment out all those circle or ball, uh, all those bouncing ball references, so basically not asking for anything. And here I can go into library simplicity, and my library simplicity has um, the bouncing ball uh, implementation, and uh, Take a look. So basically, what I do, I just uncomment and come into this line, and then I'm initializing the bouncing ball. We do update, and then we query it for the X and Y code. And I can run it, and we can see the same thing: the bouncing ball or the rectangle in our case is flying around, bouncing. We are pretty happy, and it's uh, pretty cool. So the good thing about it is that actually I can take this one and delete it, and then I can take this one and delete it. And then all I have in my sketch now is just this and the import for the library. And I can run the sketch and it still runs. Isn't it amazing? I think it's pretty amazing. So uh, further now I'm going to show you how you can actually create that library by yourself. So stay with me.